What's happening, everybody? Yes, it is time to revisit the conversation about comic conventions. And as a shocker to absolutely no one, I love comic conventions. They are a sensory overload of dope shit. So, sometime last year, I dropped a video just kind of talking about the future of comic conventions with COVID and everything that resulted from the pandemic. We already saw a bunch of events get outright canceled. Some went digital only virtual events and were still like pretty big hits and just offered up something to a like a like segments of the population who kind of miss that environment and just the everything that kind of came well almost everything that came with that including just basically like news and some some a little bit of interactivity with other fans as well as the kind of celebrities and the stardom of different worlds comics video games anime film television and people behind the scenes as well but that was there was a big hit with the pandemic like all this got shut down it's like all right everybody's looking at what's going to happen with the state of conventions and i kind of dove, dove into that with that video but i wanted to kind of circle back to that we are here we are another year we're april 2021 vaccines have been going out i've been vaccinated as part of my job i'm still wearing my mask and still taking other precautions so pretty much nothing really changed this this or except for getting the vaccination because it's still kind of going out there but I'm not gonna get too far into the numbers of that but i mean some at parts of the world the united states have loosened up and like, all right, people are kind of just revisiting, like, hey, what are conventions gonna look like? Can they come back? And I wanted to, this kind of the, the spur for this conversation was an email from Christina Rogers, part of Repop, and just kind of looking at, okay, so they do have some physical events set up for later this year. And you kind of, kind of see this in the email here where it's talking about C2E2, Emerald City Comic Con, two of my favorite conventions, Florida Supercon and New York Comic Con. So now we're talking about September, October, and two uh, weekends in December, which that's really close, especially to, for two popular events. Like that's basically a week apart, just over a week apart. But those are some dates that they have lined up. So like, all right, so some people are looking ahead. Now, as of right now, obviously, you know, that's almost, well, having out at eight months ahead so there's this immense just imagine like all the planning and like the brainstorming of what can go into these events what will these events look like now as again we already saw last year with the virtual events where you kind of take in what can you take from the full convention experience what can we do virtually okay so dealer booths those are out signings obviously those are out but you can still work in trailers q and a's and just news dumps so like hey you know we have all like all these announcements you can do still do announcements for comics video games again kind of can uh include trailers and some of those but yes comics video games movies television anime home releases all that you can still like that's news a lot of people go to conventions for news and the camaraderie of the events you can still kind of get some of the camaraderie online like interact, interactivity, connectedness with Twitter, Facebook, IG, YouTube, comment sections, chat, and Reddit obviously is huge community. So you can kind of always get that no matter what, but the news aspect you can easily do online. It's the other stuff we were talking about cosplay and kind of connecting with cosplayers, cosplayers taking pictures and videos together and uh, dealers, Obviously, that's huge. I love going through dealers' boxes. Like, I'm um, conventions. I spend a ton of time. I've spent a ton of time in the dealers' room, dealers' sections, digging through long boxes, short boxes, all types of boxes, looking at walls, buying books, toys, pops, and other random collectibles, and just going around Artist Alley and signings at the publishers' booths. I'm trying to remember back to C2E2 last year, which was right before the pandemic. Which is still wild to think about, like a month from, like, pretty much the shutdown date, or was it less than probably less than a month before the shutdown date, maybe even a couple weeks. Like we were just people were just out at a convention, 
And it was just wild, like Chicago C2E2, like it's just funny to think about, like it was just it was kind of just absolute madness. But then think about conventions going forward. Okay, so hygiene and safety and like precautions and let's be let's be serious. Talking about conventions are already a what do you want to even you might even call it a hygiene hotbed and basically just petri dish because there's just hygiene all over the place. You already talked about Con Crow, which has been a running joke for conventions. How you might come down with something shortly after returning from a convention. I felt it and just like it can be a rough couple of days, not just the adjustment because you left a fantastic weekend, but you might feel sick afterwards. So, and like different people have felt different levels of that for a couple of days and kind of wears away. It's weird. I don't know what you would call it. Just a short bug. We Everybody, again, just calls it kind of crud. That's just kind of the thing. But I want to kind of delve into some of the stuff from this email here from Christina Rogers. Again, uh, works part of Repop, who runs those conventions that I mentioned before. And just kind of look at like what their thinking is and just kind of what they have in mind kind of going into their planning and of their uh just kind of outlining stuff for the year to our community as i write this i'm filled with hope and excitement for the year ahead there's much in the works of repop that we'll announce in the coming months but today i'm bringing you an update on the return of our physical events and the first look at our plans to promote health and safety paramount to give you a peek behind the curtain even folks here have to plan six to nine months down the road we must put ourselves forward from where we are today into where we think we may be tomorrow and continue making the be the next best decision. So again, in the previous video I talked about, like there's a lot that's tied up in these events. Like people have to plan, like you're planning your, uh, like the venue and the people who you want in attendance, hotel, like if you've never been to a convention, even just for, and you're just kind of curious and you just kind of heard some of the stuff, just imagine even just as an attendee, like if you work, you have to put in, your chances are you're putting in time off or setting up, arranging something for that, setting the funds aside, travel, hotel, because you have to, I mean, you imagine you have to stay somewhere unless you have a camper, sleeping in your vehicle, which could work as well. And just setting up anything that you might need for just whatever else. There's a lot that goes into it. So imagine like that for attendees, dealers, the actual showrunners setting up, book, actually booking the venue and security. So, but a lot of times the venue will have a lot of that, will have some of that will come with uh, booking the venue. So there's just a lot that goes into planning an event. Today I share with, I share what we're planning with this uh, assurance repops. Number one priority is the well-being of the people that come to our shows. Right now we see a path forward for safe, amazing events that are going to look a bit different than usual. So that's where we're headed. That's where we're heading. Keep in mind what we what we communicate is subject to change as state and local guidelines are adjusted. We're gonna keep Florida in mind uh, in a second. I encourage you to stay connected with us via our newsletters, social channels, and websites to keep on top of the latest information right up to the shows. So our, the schedule for 2021 follows Florida Supercon, Miami Beach Convention Center, September 10th through 12th. I mentioned Florida, because after her line about state and local, uh, what was it? State and local guidelines. Florida, Florida's gonna Florida. And if you're outside of the US, you might have heard Americans talk about Florida and throwing the whole state away because if you hear some crazy stuff and some crazy news in the US, there's a strong chance it's gonna be Florida. Like just imagine this, the wild news stories that you heard there's a strong probability it's gonna it will have happened in florida florida man and it's sometimes you can just bet you can be like if i read a headline i'm like i bet that's florida and you look into it sure enough it was florida so like the florida and texas and just conventions florida was one of the first ones that we heard where people were already considering re like opening up for a convention i think last year i pretty sure it ended up getting just canceled again it was like you can't be serious like nobody this is not a good idea nobody should be doing this like cut that out so that was last year when we were still in the height of pandemic and it's still kind of going i was like this isn't just stop as people just kind of got bored and wanted to get outside and vaccinations are rolling out it's still like out there people are dying people are hospitalized and even i think japan just got just went under, or maybe not all of Japan, maybe parts of Japan, 
just went under like another state of emergency, something like that. I was just reading. So this isn't just free and clear just because everybody just feels like it. This is still obviously a pandemic and a health and safety risk. So please continue to be careful, practice your precautions, all that good stuff. So again, so Florida Supercon, maybe New York Comic Con, Javis Center, October 7th to 10th, which is it's normal weekend, it usually takes place around like six to six, seven, eight days into October. So depends on like when those days fall, but yeah, roughly like the second weekend, give or take in October, depending on, again, depending on what days uh, that falls. Emerald City Comic Con, uh, Washington State Convention Center, December 2nd through 5th, or uh, yeah, 2nd through the 5th. Now, Emerald City, which I've gone to once, which I thought was fantastic, I love Seattle, usually takes place in like, late February, March, I think, I don't think, I don't know if I've ever gone as far as early April, but around that time. So now moving it back, or I guess you could say forward, maybe, I don't know, we're gonna get into some tenant type stuff, but uh, moving to December. So now what's Seattle like in December? I don't know, but Chicago, C2E2. So now this one has been March, April. I don't think they've ever gone as far as early February or like late February, but Chicago, December, good luck with that. I'm like, I don't even know. But then also the idea of kind of similar to with the way football seasons kind of got pushed and there's still a uh, football season in the spring. So what's going to happen with the next full season is still going to start on a date, like the same open date. You're going to have a shorter kind of gap in between, shorter gap in between than you normally would have. So now with conventions, you bring them into December now, so you push them from early 2020, 2021 into later in the year, what are you gonna do for 2022's dates? Are they still gonna be, are you gonna make those new dates the same? Or are you going to pull them back to their normal time frame? but now they're going to be only a couple months from the previous showing, and then you're gonna kind of run into, all right, well, you just had a, you might've just had a bunch of people come to those, that first December date, are they going to be interested in even attending a couple months later? So, like, that's just, that's kind of the gamble of running an event like this and dealing with that in the middle of a pandemic. All right, you got to take that gamble. Do you want to, you want to get these things back on track? Because again, there's a lot of money tied up into this. But getting back to our email, uh, with the return of physical events comes so much we were missing this past year, supporting small businesses and indie creators more directly. Old friends reconnecting, the energy of a panel room when a cast first takes the stage. I can't even believe I'm saying this, but I almost missed the awkward camaraderie of the women's restroom line. Almost. Speaking of lines, let's talk capacity and a few other key safety measures we'll be taking. This is going to be the important part. We will be running all our shows with reduced capacity with our new safety precautions in place. Attendance and badges will be very limited so that we can ensure physical distancing. We're working closely with each convention center to determine how many people are permitted in the building every day and at a given time. We are requiring approved face coverings for all individuals attending our events, including our exhibition, exhi exhibitors and staff. They must be worn at all times within our venues. For more information, you can visit the fact pages on each of our show websites. Temperature screening upon entry will be required to enter our events. Anyone, anyone with an elevated temperature will not be permitted to enter the event. We will have increased sanitation, sanitization and cleaning with enforced physical distancing throughout the event. We have also adopted a firm, no handshakes, no high fives, no, no hugs policy. We're all going to have to get very smooth and cool looking at either the elbow bump or, uh, or air high fives. Please start practicing now. I know now we can stop right there. That one, I just, when I read that, like, that was just kind of funny. So what's going to happen if people are just at the convention hall and all of a sudden, like somebody just isn't thinking or just get so excited and they high five or just hug somebody. Are they, like, are the staff runners or the show runners are just going to be like, Hey, what are you doing? Get out of here. Get, like confiscate the badges and kick them out. Like, what's going to happen? What is that? Like what is their, what does it say? A firm, yeah, so firm policy, what does that mean? What does that entail? I don't know, maybe that's just something like, hey, you know what, it's something we're putting in right now, just throw it out there. We don't want this, just put it in people's heads, like, okay, is this something to be mindful of? And then later down the line, as they kind of 
as you get closer to the event and just other things, they start to like solidify other plans and other measures. Are they going to kind of come down with like a, I don't know, a penalty? But I, I don't, again, I don't even know what that would look like. I know there are a lot more questions than what I've shared here. You're probably wondering what the heck a photo op may look like and how panel seating will work. We'll be sharing more information in the months leading up to our shows and we are committed to being as transparent as possible. Our goal remains the same, bring together our fan communities to celebrate the best pop culture has to offer. Alongside all of our physical events, we'll be running a virtual event companion through findthemetaverse.com. So whether or not you join us in person, you can attend each of our shows and have a pretty excellent time. Save the date for the next Metaverse event, June 7th through 13th, and follow our newly launched social media pages, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. More announcements are coming soon with an on-sale date with on-sale dates, guests, panels, and so much more. We promise it will be worth the wait. Finally, thank you for your continued support in what has been a difficult time for our entire community. Thank you for your patience with us at every turn and for your understanding as we continue to navigate the future of pop culture events together. Higher, further, faster, Christina Rogers uh, with the she, her pronouns, U.S. Comic Portfolio Director, Reed Pop. So I also like when I was read that her signature with the Portfolio Director, I wonder, does Reed Pop do that or is that just like, does she have another role like with either just kind of independent or is there just something that she does? Like, I was just kind of curious, that's so interesting. But anyway, guys, uh, shout out to Christina Rogers. So yes, I uh, just wanted to share this email and kind of talk about that. And again, like here we are, April 2021, and we have some events lined up for later in the year, late fall, uh, going into winter. What, and obviously still some time out, and a lot of people have to start considering, hey, what am I comfortable with? What are these events gonna look like? The reduced capacity, and again, kind of going back to what will happen with 2022, does kind of present a in kind of a unique opportunity, I guess, because you could say, okay, we reduce capacity and we're gonna have an event in let's say let's take C2E2 for example, an event in December, reduce capacity, and then another one if they decide to go back to their original dates in let's say March or April, that could present a an interesting opportunity because with the reduced capacity, that's less people at each one, but you could still have a bunch of people to get or come just at the different events. So a different group of attendees and maybe potentially uh, dealers at the December show, as well as in a potential early 2022, 2022 show in April, let's say. So like that would be fun. Now travel wise and just the attendees and dealers like and publishers, a lot of money goes into these events, traveling and just setting up, purchasing booths. I wonder they could even, Reed Pop could even like entice people, like exhibitors, public, like publishers, dealers, like, you know, reduce rates on tables and booths to kind of uh, persuade more, uh, more people to come to the shows for either one of those events. Like that could boost some numbers. Not, not obviously you're gonna reduce them like the overall but like hey if like you kind of start to see reduced interest like that could be a way to entice people to either come to one or the other kind of show and then going back to uh com a level of comfort because i know just going back thinking about last year like all right you know what movies i'm good i don't ever have to go through another movie theater i mean i love obviously i love film and i like going to movies like it's a great experience to see a movie for the first time there are some movies I saw as a kid and some even my favorite movie, Ghostbusters, that I never got to see in theaters. I would love to experience on the big screen. But so like I like the movie theater experience, but I'm OK with sacrificing that, especially during the pandemic. Like I was good. Conventions. Hell no. Like I had I was like, if I'm not going to movie theater, I would never. I was like, I have no intention of stepping foot inside a convention center because no, just absolutely madness. Go to the store, obviously, and I have to work because so I go in the store for essentials and I still went to the comic book shop, but it was always usually just besides the maybe one or two people working, there might have been one or two other people in there at a time or besides me. So that and everybody's pretty much spaced out in there and everybody's kind of all over each other's backs like you would at a convention center, which would be insane. So. Again, just want to try to share this. There is some 
optimism and love the again just kind of everybody loves the comic convention experience and there are certain set like aspects you can sacrifice to have that with the virtual events but there are other parts of that as far as like the cosplayers and the dealers and would you be interested i guess we all kind of have if you've gone to smaller smaller conventions maybe held inside of uh not a bar room but just small hotel rooms and like i've been to several one day shows like that I'm like hey just small you've got a bunch of dealers what 10 12 dealers or something like that offering like different styles of uh like different types of books and just kind of set up like that and like in and out in a day and that'd be it as far as the weekend stuff who you knows so you kind of just look at what your uh what you would be interested in so that's what i kind of want to put out to everybody here what how do you feel right now as far as conventions coming back like full physical events obviously will reduce uh capacities but just them coming back does that work for you or are you just kind of checked out and i'm sure there are a ton of people within the different fan communities that are immunocompromised and just have their own health risks they're like you know what it's like it's just a wrap for me i'm good i'll stay at home gotta protect myself my family and they're just okay with hey that's just kind of that's just a card they're dealt so they're okay kind of uh sacrificing that for the sake of themselves and their loved ones and do you think that there are any precautions that these showrunners could take that will make you feel comfortable enough to step aside a convention hall for a day or two and be around whoever knows how many people and yeah just a lot of stuff uh to kind of consider there and a lot of questions still to be answered and i imagine we will see from other conventions around the united states and the world as kind of like all right especially kind of going into begin to spring and the summer and kind of opening up maybe uh, throughout the rest of the year like hey there's there is some potential light at the end of the tunnel as far as conventions are concerned so yeah uh, just stuff there just want to share or get some thoughts and just kind of share some of this stuff and uh, just kind of engage where uh, gauge everybody's opinions on this stuff so yeah uh, happy reading happy hunting happy collecting stay safe as always this is Gino and Dragon thanks for watching and peace out